Father seeks. Today we are here to encourage each other how to be firm through the storm. Psalm 124. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, indeed the Lord has been on our side. It's now our duty to be firm through the storm. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you because Lord, you've been on our side. Lord, forgive us, Lord, from all our unrighteousness and where we have doubted your able hands, O oh God. May you bring us back to your fold and today we have the victory in you 
and we are confident saying that Lord will come out victorious in each and every challenge that we go through in life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Because, oh God, even when the oceans rise, oh God, we will find our refuge in you, oh God.
just asking for your move because sometimes we lack option and we decide to depend on our own understanding but God today we choose to lay our lives down unto your feet so that God you may work through us and work within us God for your glory God we worship you God even for our congregation out there I pray that God you may be with them that you may guide them God in everything God protect them it's in Jesus name I pray amen praise Jesus God is good all the time. and all the time, God God is good. Good. it's a wonderful is time to hear from the Lord today. It's a bit different. We're excited because of the joy of the Lord. Today, we'll introduce our panelists who will encourage us how to stand firm through the storm. May God bless you as you listen through and as you be blessed. Amen. Thank you so much, worship team, and uh, welcome and good evening to everyone. We are so happy to have you here, and we are having a special arrangement today. We have a chat, and we will have uh, our two friends as well, and myself as well included, and we'll be able to talk about farm through the storm. So what does that mean? How does it affect you? How does it affect me through this time? And we can be able to discuss that this evening. So welcome, feel at home, and uh, get comfortable. So we can begin with opening remarks. Uh, you might want to just, what are your opening thoughts about being farmed through the storm? Thank you, Anne. Uh, praise God, good evening. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful time that we are in. I would say briefly, tough times do not last, but tough people do last. I think that's one key thing that really stands for me, especially for this time, mm -hmm. yes. Thank you. And for Susan? Uh, I'd just like to say that I'm thankful for this time we're going through. And uh, I know that nothing happens in vain. God has everything in control. And so I'm just excited to learn how God has, can use us at this time and how we can also be there for others at such a time. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And because I'll be throwing in my thoughts as well, one of the things that we want to consider right now is what is the place of God, you know, in the storm? Where, where is religion? Where is our faith in this storm? Because when the foundations are shaken, where does the righteous stand? So one of the things we'll also be considering, even as we think about it, is where will you be found at the end of the storm? Mm -hmm. So maybe we can think about uh, three questions, and probably we can just go through them as, as we think about each of us, just present you know, what you have in your mind. So the first question, is uh, why are storms necessary in life? Because as you've mentioned, you know, storms um, are eventual. They, nobody doesn't go through a storm. Actually, ev even as we sit here today, we are all going through something, mm -hmm. and we're all going through individual storms. So why are storms necessary in life? What, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> um, it's a good question, and I think uh, one that uh, is, is sort of, like, I would say, a tough one. Nobody likes storms, mm -hmm. because number one, uh, nobody is comfortable. Yeah. 
with anything that disrupts their normal or comfort, you know, zone in life. But I think storms are quite necessary. Um, you know, I'll take an example of, uh, you know, an aeroplane. You know, it's because of that resistance that, you know, planes get to so well and all that. You know, birds like the eagle, they need, you know, the storms for them to actually, you know, sort of like, you know, balance themselves well and, you know, to, to fly as they do. But I would say fly, uh, storms are quite necessary in life because they're there to sort of like uh, not just strengthen us, but to help us, you know, bring out a certain beauty a beauty of endurance, you know, something that really makes our foundation firm, all right? Storms of life are there to actually show us that, uh, you know, you know uh, we are not just who we are. There's more to it that we can see. Mm -hmm. There is something inbuilt, you know, that God himself made in each and every one. That, uh, you know, um, that which we go through in life is not there to sort of put us, put us down, but it's there to make us stronger, the first thing. And, you know, sort of like, uh, you know, to also be a motivation to others who are out there. Yes. Thank you. And, and what do you think? I'm going to read a portion of scripture. James chapter 1 verse uh, 3 and 4. It says, Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. So I think an important part of storms in our lives is that it helps us to grow into maturity as Christians because it's easy for... It's easy to love God when nothing wrong, nothing is going wrong, you know, and to think that your faith is uh, where it should be and it's tip top, you know. But when trials come, that's when you realize there are areas you need to work on. That's when God shows you the things that maybe are hidden that you did not know were there that are still hindering you from trusting in God completely. And you find yourself having to rely upon God and therefore you realize also that there's the lordship of Christ, there's the headship of God in your life. Without trials, I don't think we could easily come by this realization. We could know it in our heads, but unless we are there, we will not discover it for ourselves that I need God, you know, and without God, I am nothing. And I like that Solomon says in uh, Ecclesiastes that uh, good wealth, having the chance to enjoy your wealth and what not is uh, a gift from God. It's a gift. It is not something we have to have. But he says that when a, wise, when a rich man has everything he needs, eh? I wish I could quote it exactly. When you have everything you need, then they, you get to some comfortable place where you no longer think about God and what God can do for you. He says that they seldom reflect on the days of their life because God keeps them occupied with gladness of the heart. So when God keeps you occupied with gladness of the heart, you don't reflect on God and what you can do to show your devotion and your trust in him. But I thank God for hardship because that is when I realize that I need God to see me through. I have been comfortable up to this point and I should thank God for that. And I should thank God for all future comforts that come. Thank you. And if I, I, I could just present my thoughts as well. One of the things that um, James 1, you've, you've quoted it so well, even when I was preparing, I, I read the same scripture. And if I could take it from verse 2, it says, Consider it pure joy when you face all forms of trials, because the trial of your faith creates perseverance. And let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and completely lacking nothing. And that's, that's the main thing. You know, when you're in the storm, it's so uncomfortable. You know, you're asking yourself, when will it end? Why, why is this happening to, to me? Why, why am I going through this situation? Like right now, even with the current situation in the country and indeed the whole world, so many people are asking why me? Why am I the one with the job cut? Why am I the one whose family, you know, I can't meet? Because so many people have been separated, you know, across borders. Why is it that um, I can't have the money that I need to do the things that I used to? So when you are in the middle of that storm and when the storm is raging, we need to remember why the storms are necessary. Because it's like when you go for an injection in the hospital, you know, if you don't remember why you're getting the injection, it might be uncomfortable at first, but there's a larger benefit. Because even in our storms, even in the situations that we go through life, there is something, there is a greater glory that comes from it. And it's unfortunate that we learn through um, perspective um, and retrospect because it is only later than you realize, oh, so the thing that I went through five years ago, you know, that's the thing that built me now. But when you are in the middle, you are crying, we were, you know, you are frustrated, you thought God left you. But at the end of the day, now you see that it's necessary later on. 
So even in this current situation with COVID and all the effects that it has had across the world, you know, right now we don't understand. And in the, when you're in the middle of the storm and your boat, you know, is raging like that in Matthew, you know, you don't understand and I don't understand and we all don't understand why we're going through why, what we're going through. But at the end of the day, later on, when we get to the other side, as the disciples did, we will realize that the storm was necessary. Because there were so many things that we took for granted. We took for granted coming to church. We took for granted going to the office, you know, or going to your place of work. We took for granted meeting up with friends and, and you know, going for Kesha or going to just see someone at nine o'clock, you know, and visit and till, stay till late. There are so many things we took for granted. We took for granted health that I can shake your hand and you shake mine and I go thinking nothing. But now this situation has brought so many things to perspective that now we might not understand why we're going through what we're going through, but I do believe that later on, you know, when we get through the other side, we'll realize that, you know, this happened for a reason. It, you know, at the end of the day, you know, my, the, my favorite verse is Romans 8.28, that all things work for good. All you know, and even as we consider the situation, where are we right now? And, and this brings us to the second, you know, question that we might want to present is, um, what is, how do you guard your heart? How do you guard your heart? How do you keep your mind when you are in the storm? And uh, I know we'll be having further discussions, but this is specifically targeting the issue of mental health during this storm. Because where is your heart? Well, your life is on fire. Where is your mind when well, your life is on fire? Because so many of us, um, they say that the second wave of this epidemic will not, or the pandemic is not even the sickness itself, but the mental health challenges that will come later on. That so many people right now, someone is even watching us and they are so discouraged. You know, and there are so many people right now that are getting into depression, that the situation is, is not good, and yet their heart and their mind is fighting, and they're at the point maybe they're almost giving up. So maybe we can discuss and say, wh how do you guard your heart while you're in the storm? How do you keep the courage? So maybe now I'll start with ladies. So <laughs> ladies first. I, I try I to be gender balanced. So maybe Sue, you can, you can begin. You know, how do you keep that? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think that's a really weighty question because I think it depends on each person uniquely. And I don't know if I'm qualified to speak for someone else because the way something affects me mentally might not be the same way it affects another. And so I would say that um, I think the first thing is prayer. The thing that God encourages, encourages us to do is to pray because he tells us not to be anxious for anything, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving to make our request known to him. And the peace of God, the peace of Christ that transcends understanding will, he will, he will, just, and he will give us the peace of Christ that transcends understanding, you know. And... Um, when I think about that, it is not an easy thing. I know it is easy to quote it or to speak it, but it does not come as easily when you're in the eye of the storm because you are there and you're thinking, I have been praying and uh, what not, and uh, I, don't see, I don't see the storm <laughs> ending. You see, we have been praying against Corona, I think, from uh, January, and here we are. It's halfway through the year and we're still here. And... Uh, it's easy to, when you're there, to just, like, just give up and say no more, no more. And I realized personally that I had a problem with this. In the eye of the storm, I would persevere in prayer for a while, and then I would get tired, and I would just say, like, okay, I'm not going to pray anymore, because it's not going to make a difference. But then God showed me a different way, something that encourages me, something that works for me to help me go back to prayer. Because I read the book of Job. There's a time I had given up so much that I couldn't even pray. So I said, let me see someone who has gone through trouble and what they did. And so I went to the book of Job. And I realized, number one, that I do not have problems. There are people who have problems. <laughs> Job had problems, you know. Because I don't know. I haven't lost even one of my children. But if I could lose all of them... I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't think I'd stay sane. And here's someone who, after going through all that, and his wife tells him, now is it a logical time to curse God? And then he says, you foolish woman. 
will we take good from God and not take bad also from him? You know, as, as in when God is good to us, it's fine. But now when things are bad, is it, now do we turn our back against God, you know? And when I read that, I was flawed because I realized that I don't have problems and yet I am so full of uh, entitlement. I think that God may be, that why can God come through for me and why can God do this for me and that for me, you know? And so that was my problem personally. I don't know if many share the same challenge. But then I started reading Joseph's story and uh, the stories of people like Isaiah who God asked to walk naked for three years, things that God has never asked of me. And yet here I was still thinking that God is punishing me, you know? And so I realized then that no matter how hard things get for me, they haven't gotten to the point where I'm being stoned for knowing my Christ like Stephen, you know. They haven't gotten to a point where I've received 49, 39 strokes, sorry, like Paul, five times, not once, but five times, you know. And so I realize that people of God have suffered all through from the beginning of time. And I think if that can encourage someone that we should keep meditating on that. People of God have suffered from the beginning of time. We are not the first ones to suffer. It, it hurts deeply. No one does not hurt. Even Job hurt when he was going through that. But in the end, it is just relying on God. The times when you can't pray, you tell God, God, today I can't even pray. I need you to help me. And God has told us that he'll never leave us or forsake us. The Holy Spirit will come through then and give us power to pray that we never thought we had. We'll get access to a resource that we couldn't access before because the Holy Spirit will then mobilize his power to help us to get through here. And so, yeah, I think prayer is an important part. And just also reading the stories of other people who have gone through that, yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm. Very wise words. We'll even uh, try and um, look at some of them. What, what are your thoughts on that? Boy child. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I, I think Susan has actually put it out very, very well. Yeah. I would say uh, now, as we, as we actually began, storms are there in life, whether you're a believer or a non-believer. Mm. It's, it's a bottom line. Storms are there. Mm. But I think now there is a certain advantage that we, we need to sustain, yeah. we as children of God. I'll probably read the book of Second Peter chapter 1 and verse, verse 3. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let me begin from verse 2. Second Peter chapter 1, from verse 2 to 3. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things, that pertain to life and godliness. I'll repeat again, verse 3. Mm -hmm. As his divine power, okay, has given to us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. And so we as believers, there is something that we need to understand. That God is not a God of mediocrity. He never put us in this life to tell us to just succeed or probably to just prosper in a certain way of life. But when it comes to this other one, just sort. Mm. All right? The Bible says his divine power. Yeah. So that is where we actually get all this inspiration. Mm -hmm. Okay? Where do I get my fuel of joy from? Mm -hmm. From his divine power. Oh. When you go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says, in the beginning, God. And I think where we actually miss it is that most of the time in life, we bring God towards yeah, yeah. certain areas. Yeah. Whereby God, humana, yeah. please come in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> once, you, once it is sorted. Thank you very uh, much. Uh, thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> exactly. You know. And somebody once said something very powerful, that certain times in life, an example is a graduate, you know, is probably a, a born-again graduate or probably somebody who is still looking out for a job, will look spiritual until the job comes. Mm. Once the job comes, we are like, God, thank you so much. Mm. Now I am busy. <laughs> Matters to do with the prayers and everything. So the only time that we go back to reference ourselves is when issues yeah. of life. Yeah. But God is telling us in this verse that the divine power, mm -hmm. not money, motivation for money, yeah. spouses or children or all these pleasures of life. But yeah. it says that the divine power, okay, has given to us not most things, yeah. but all, all things. things. Whether in storm, mm -hmm. whether in good times, Absolutely. whether in happy moments, yeah. whether there is, you know, issues of life. Are actually, and it says the divine power of God has given to us all things that pertain. So which means we have no reason yeah. to say this area the word of God is not tackling this area. Mm. So let me sort out myself yeah. how I know exactly. Yeah. You know, the best how, you know, yeah. the best I know. But it says pertaining to life. Yeah. 
and then to godliness. Yeah. Two things. Wow. That is completion. Yeah. To life. Yeah. Life to means issues of parenting. How do I behave? Okay. How do I conduct myself? Yeah. All right. How do I spend? Those are issues pertaining to, to life. life yeah. And the word of God tells us he has given us that divine power yeah. in that area. When it comes to godliness, yeah. he has still given us the divine power yeah. to operate well when it comes to goodness. Yeah. So at the end of the day, we should not be frustrated. The only time we get frustrated is when we concentrate on one area. When yeah. we sp- frustrate on things pertaining to life, yeah. we miss godliness. Life will do injustice to us. Yeah. When we focus on godliness and forget the issues of life, yeah. life will treat us abnormally. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, if, if I can just put my closing yeah. thoughts on, on that question yeah. really quickly. You know, I was reading um, 100, Psalms 107, verse um, 29 and 30. I'll just read it quickly. He says that, um, I'll start from verse 28. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper, and the waves of the sea were hushed. So God has the ability to calm the storms of our lives. Because sometimes when, when, as you said, we look around for so many solutions, we forget that God has the ability to calm the storm, to a whisper. And you know, that's what happened when Jesus was going with his disciples. That The Bible says a great storm arose and he just said, peace be still. So even if you are there us right now and your life is raging and you're wondering what to do, the Bible says that he will calm your storm to a whisper. That's our God. And we just need to trust in him. The third question, and if we can just transition, you know, after, you know, we have gone through the storm, sometimes we probably have um, a few of us, and I think I've been in that position where we almost have a sense of entitlement, you know, and the question would be, do we really deserve what God gives to us? Because sometimes um, we have the, I call it the why attitude, you know, why God, why? Why me? Why my family? Why my career? Why? So I know that it's a very sensitive issue because at the end of the day, we are trying to think about how God will help us. But it, I think it's going back to the basis of, you know, thanking God for even the little things that he does. So do we really deserve all that he gives us? You know, do we really deserve all the blessings of God in our lives? Maybe your thoughts. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Uh, I do think that uh, this is a key question because I think that's the reason that most of us struggle a lot with uh, hardship. We do not know how to cope with hardship because we think we deserve to have comfortable lives. We deserve to have good things in our lives. So why is this happening to me? You know, why, you know? And so I think I do ask myself this question a lot. Do I deserve the good things that happen to me? And uh, I'll still go back to Job, I think, because it works for me. And uh, I like, I was, I, I, as I read through the book and saw his complaints and sometimes also his humility, you know, he went through all the phases of grief, denial, and all those things, you know, bargaining, anger. And as I went through all the phases with him, I was really keen to know what would God tell him when God showed up. And when God shows up, God did not bring comfort the way that it was expected, you know, oh, cuddles, and I'm so sorry you had to go through this and whatnot. But when God arrives, God asks such weighty questions, difficult questions that I do not think Job had taken the time to really think about. Like, was he there when the foundations of the earth were laid? You know, that's what God asks him. Do you know, do you put breath in the life of a man? Can you put breath in the life of that animal if I give it to you? Have you considered such and such a thing? Do you know where the lightning is kept, where the storehouses of snow are, you know? And such difficult questions that Job does not have answers to. And God tells him, brace yourself like a man. You ask for me and I'm here now. I want you to answer my questions because here you are complaining. And here I am now, I'm asking you the questions, you know. And God asks him such difficult questions. And then there's a part that I wanted to just read uh, from Job uh, chapter 40, verse 8 to 14. It says, will you discredit my justice? This is God speaking. eh? Would you condemn me to justify yourself? Do you have an arm like God's and can your voice thunder like his? Then adorn yourself with glory and splendor and clothe yourself in honor and majesty. Unleash the fury of your wrath. Look at all who are proud and bring them low. Look at all who are proud and humble them. Crush the wicked where they bury them all in the dust together. Shroud their faces in the grave. Then I myself will admit to you that your own right hand can save you. 
And so what God was asking Job is, can you save yourself? Can you sustain yourself? Haven't everything you've had, hasn't everything you've had until this moment been a gift from me? Did I not give it to you? If I want, are you to ask me then why are you doing this, God, and what not? See, and so this taught me again something new and interesting that I may feel sorry for myself and get angry at God when I'm having trouble because I think also that is, I think it's normal to a certain extent, but as you grow more in God's grace, I think it becomes less and less, I think. For me, that has been my experience. But when God arrives and asks you the questions, even the breath that you're taking then, do you know how it ended up in your body? If he decided to take it then, could you do anything about it? You cannot do anything about it, you see. And this is not to paint God as this mean person who wants you to go through trouble, of course. But God was trying to change perspectives because it's easy for us to see the world's perspective and our, our perspective of things. But God switched on Job the perspective so that Job had to see things from his side, you know, and see all the work that God has put into this world from the beginning of time. So why does Job feel that he's so special in the middle of all these things that have happened that somehow God should move heaven and earth so that he's comfortable and has everything he needs, right? Yeah, and actually it, it, it ties up with, you know, what Joe jo said at the beginning, mm -hmm. that no one is immune to a storm. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can present your thoughts and, and tell us, you know, do we really deserve because so many things we took for granted that we had you know we took for granted that we have cars that we can drive we took for granted that we have jobs that we can go to or businesses that we can go to now so many of us those are not there you know we don't have that anymore so how can we change our perspective on the other side of the storm to realize that everything we have is a blessing you know how can can we do that um I think we, we, need, we need to have a change of, uh, we need to actually see things as God sees things. Mm -hmm. Whereby the love is based on what we have yeah. or what we expect mm. him to fulfill. Absolutely. The love of God is not quantified by the fact that I'm waiting for a job now. Mm. Probably I'm waiting for some cash to come in. Mm. Probably rent. When it mm. comes, now I know God loves me. Mm. All right. I think probably we need to probably graduate. We need to grow from that mentality. Mm. He says every good and perfect gift comes from, from above. And I think we need to rest in God's revelation of unfailing love. Mm. That for God so loved the world mm. that he gave his only begotten That's son. Awesome. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish. I think there is a, there's a revelation of love that we believers ought to, to have. Mm. In the sense that, I'll give an example my children, mm. if there's one thing they are really sure of is the love of their father mm. and the love of their mom, mm. all right? right? It would be absurd. An example, if, if my son Jeremy mm -hmm. says, Dad, I know you love me. Mm. I want a car, mm. all right? So, according to him, his test of love mm -hmm. from the father is probably when he gets the car mm. at that time. Mm. Okay? Probably he's five years or maybe say ten years. Mm. According to me, he's not fit to do what? Mm. To drive. Right. Because I know it's a precious gift that mm. might signal to a son or mm. from a father or a parent to a child, mm. but it is at the wrong time because I know that which he's asking for or she's asking for mm. might be the only way to what? Yeah. For, 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 for actually for his life to end, you know, yeah. for him to die. Mm. But because I love him so much, mm. All right? There are some things pertaining to, you know, to, to life mm. with regards to provision, yeah. the love from yeah. a father. If he can have that, he can have the car, yeah. but not that time. Yeah. All right? So the father knows very well. Yeah. So, and I think the same translates to our spiritual life. Mm. All right? That I, 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 I take refuge in God's love so much mm. that I know everything God has is mine. Yeah. That is why Christ came and actually told, when you read the book of John chapter 17, mm. that God, you know, I brought glory to you, yeah. all right, by the things you sent me to come and do, all right, because I know all you have is mine. Remember the, prodig uh, the story of the, the, the parable of the prodigal son, all right? Everything belonged to the son. Mm. Even the time when he forfeited and ran away from home, the Bible says that the father on a daily basis yeah. used to stand and wait yeah. for the son to come back and look at how the father 
receive the sun. And you, you know, know that's such a beautiful thing because when you go back to does God really love me? Yes. Even if there is a storm. That the presence of a storm doesn't relegate the fact that God loves us. And he loves us so much that he can be able to watch us and let us learn le the lesson as, as you prepare you. And then uh, in his due time, he removes us. Because as sure as you know, it is um, the love of God will take us through every situation. I know that this situation will end. But one of the things that we're also thinking about is, you know, at the end of it, I will personally, I will be very grateful for the things that I have in my life and the relationships that I have in my life, because then I will know that they are all gifts from God. The fact that I can go to work somewhere, the fact that I can have food on my table, the fact that I can pay rent or whatever other bills, you know, the fact that I can be able to stand and, and, and even serve in church, all those are gifts from God. And now on the other side, we will be able to realize that it's just ways that God loves us so much and we don't take them for granted. And, you know, and even if you're there and you're watching us and, and you're having an issue that you're wondering, does God really love me? The love of the Father is unconditional. Even if, you know, you're not paying your rent on time, the love of the Father is unconditional. Even if right now you're still waiting on God for your finances or your health or whatever other situation, because I normally say that there were even situations before COVID. You know, there were, we were all fighting battles. There were still storms before. And even as, you know, we start to conclude, one of the things that I would want to just share from all of us is that God loves you. Wherever you are, God loves you. Because the fact that we are all going through the situation, and for some people it is difficult, you know. Maybe you're there and your mind is sinking to a very dark place and you're wondering, will there be a brighter day? You know, will this situation end? And the fact is that God loves you, even wherever you are. And the fact that he will bring you out. I, I love Isaiah 54, 11, that says, you know, you who are storm-tossed are not comforted. I will rebuild your foundations. You know, and, and it uses such a beautiful word, lapis lazuli, that's a precious stone, that God will rebuild us again, even better. You know, foundations are, are not seen, so you can use any kind of stone, but God will use precious stone to rebuild our lives again. So we believe that even at the end of this situation, you know, God will make us even better, you know. And time is almost gone, but maybe we can just start to think, what are our closing, you know, thoughts? What would you tell someone who is there and they're in the middle of the storm and they don't know what to do? You know, how can you encourage a brother, a sister out there, a mother, a father, who is stuck in the storm and they don't know when it will end? So just your closing thoughts. Well, thank you. Uh, as you say, time is really running. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I think to, uh, to my fellow believer out there, a uh, brother or a sister who believes in Christ, and uh, to those who are not even born again, mm. is, uh, I would say, not just peace, but there is comfort. There is an advantage in being a child of God, mm. all right? And I would say that, um, allow me to read, and especially to believers, uh, Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. It's a scripture we all know, all right? Daniel 11, 32 says, But the people who know their God mm -hmm. shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Not just exploits, mm -hmm. but great exploits. Amen. Mine would, uh, I would like to encourage to you, my brother, to my sister out there, There's much more to it in knowing God. Mm. Storms are there, life is there, but we have an advantage being children of God based on knowledge. Yeah. All right? So it's, it's, it's possible for us to actually walk in the knowledge and the revelation of who God is and what his love is all about for our lives. Mm. And I think what I can actually say is let us endeavor to know God more. The more you know God, yeah. the more you mature. Yeah. The more you operate on different realms, different graces, all right? So this issue of, uh, I would say, th this shallowness is responsible for, you know, for this way of life. Because when you look at the, the believer today, and most of the times, and I think this also challenges me uh, as a believer, yeah. that at times my life is like, is, is like mocking the love of God. Yeah. When you look at the life of a believer today, and mostly those Christ you know, Christians who believe in God, our lives should reflect who God is, the yeah. excellence of who God is. Mm -hmm. When we talk about, when we probably say portray our lives to other non-believers, mm -hmm. they should see Thank who you. God is in our lives. So my, my, my parting Thank shot will you. be, mm -hmm. know God, all strong, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And only then can you do exploits. That's great. Thank you. So what would be your closing remarks? Mm. I'll close with a verse, uh, a portion of scripture. Matthew 6, 31 to 34, it says, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I think my emphasis there is your Father in heaven knows that you need them. And I think if we rely on that, God keeps his promises. God has never been a liar. So just entrust everything to God. Right now, if there's nothing you can do, you can trust God at least. And your Father in heaven knows what you need. He will supply according to your need. Thank you. Wow, thank you. And uh, just my closing thoughts. I would take them from Matthew chapter 8, and I'll read from verse 27. And it's, um, you actually take it from verse 26, and it talks about, Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. And the men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the wave obey him. So even as we close, God is there. And he is the God that the winds and the waves obey. He is the God that the storms obey. That he will say, peace be still. And that's what he's saying in your life right now. Peace be still. And at the end of the day, you will come through. You will come out stronger. You will come out more victorious. So hang in there. Trust in God. He loves you and he will take you through the storm. Thank you so much. And now before we close, we'll take a song of worship and then come back in prayer. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Andrew and Susan, for such a meaningful and timely conversation. And as we prepare to pray, let us join together in this song. Looking back. 
back on where we've come from because of you and nothing we've done to desire the love and mercy you've shown your grace was strong enough to keep us at and you made our way when the bats were against the wall And you looked as if it was over You made a way, made a way. And we're standing here And we're standing here Only because, only because you oh, made our way You made a way When the bats were when a bat saw against the wall And it looked as if it was over Lord, you made a way And we're standing here And we're standing here Only because you made a way You move mountains You cause walls to fall With your power you perform miracles and there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because you made say you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power perform miracles perform there is nothing that's impossible, that's impossible, that's impossible. and standing only here because only because you made say you move mountains, you cause walls, you cause walls to fall with your power, perform miracles, perform miracles. there is nothing. That's impossible, and we're standing here only because you made our way. Thank you so much, worship team, and that was truly an inspiration. God does make a way for everybody. And uh, in closing, we will pray actually each of us will pray just a brief prayer to encourage someone who is there you're an unbeliever you're an, you're an unbeliever you are still learning in the faith just uh, my sister my brother please um over to you we'll begin with susan and i'll finish up thank you our heavenly father we are thankful for this chance that you've given us to share your word to talk to each other to encourage one another lord carry one another's burdens, O oh Lord, and I pray, O oh God, that someone who has had a burden in their heart, O oh God, will receive rest, O oh God. You say to us that uh, we come to you, all of us who are weary and heavy laden, and you will give us rest, O oh Lord. And I pray, Lord, that right now for everyone who is listening to this, O oh God, that those who have burdens, O oh God, that they are going to lay them at your feet, O oh Lord, and as a faithful as faithful as you are, O oh God, you're going to take them up, O oh God, and make their burdens light, O oh God. I pray, O oh Lord, Father, that uh, you're going to continue providing for us, Father. You have said that you know everything that we need, O oh God. I pray, Father, that you're going to help us, O oh God, to faithfully seek first your kingdom, O oh God, so that all our other needs, Father, will be added to us, O oh God. I pray, Father, that we are going to continue serving you with thanksgiving in our hearts, O oh Lord. I pray that you're going to trust in you, Father, that you're going to provide for everyone, O oh God, according to their needs, O oh Lord, my God. And that you're going to also help us to grow stronger in this time, to get to know you better, and to be of help to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Joseph? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless and exalt your name for this session that we have had. Gracious Lord, just reflecting about your unfailing love. Your word says that, Lord, in our weakness, your strength is made manifest. 
that father indeed when we are poor lord then we can proclaim and say we are rich gracious lord we come into this time in our king of glory disguising lord even the crisis of faith especially when there are storms lord my prayer goes to your sons and daughters whom you have called into the kingdom the family of believers that lord you will fortify each and every one of us by the power and the presence of your holy spirit that lord we shall endeavor to know you that lord jesus christ we shall know the truth and the truth will set us free that father lord indeed we shall be fortified with the joy of salvation the joy that lord travails every other issues of life father our prayer king of glory is that lord the believer who hears this shall come to a complete realization and the revelation of your unfailing love lord may you strengthen us king of glory to see the power of your love not the issues of life that yes in as much as the issues of life are there and at times tend to lord to swears that lord we shall never uh, never be removed from your presence and so father we pray that in the name of jesus christ because we know your grace is sufficient lord we pray by the presence of your holy spirit that lord our eyes will be opened our ears will be opened our hearts will be strengthened to walk with you that father lord through the divine power we will gain wisdom we will gain authority to deal with the issues pertaining to life and to godliness. Amen. That when Lord Jesus Christ you come, it shall not be based on war ye, it shall not be sympathy. Mm. But you are coming back for a victorious church. Amen. You are coming back for a victorious believer, O oh Lord. W those who have waged war, those who have stood for, for the faith. Mm. This is our prayer, gracious Father. May you come and reign in our lives that nothing will replace your unfailing love in our lives. We want to thank you. We want to worship you, Lord. Even to those who are not believers, gracious Lord, out there, to those who have not committed their lives before you through Christ, we pray that you may touch their heart. May you convict their spirit that, Lord, they will surrender their lives to you. That in the name of Jesus Christ, no other greater gift in life than the gift of salvation. That, Father, their lives will be surrendered to you. And in you only will they find peace and comfort. Amen. The peace that surpasses all human understanding. Yes, Father, this is our prayer. And we are trusting you that, Lord, once this pandemic is over, Father, Lord, the church will be victorious. Mm. Families will be, Father, Lord, are, are strengthened in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. The nation's eye will be open to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That, Father, Lord, we shall be more than conquerors. We thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And dear Lord, we just want to come before you to thank you for those who have watched this session today. And we want to pray for anybody who might be having uh, needs, especially challenges in their physical or their mental health, my father. We want to thank you because they have even gotten the opportunity to watch this program. And, oh God, we want to pray that you will minister to them wherever they are, oh God, at their places of, of, of their staying, oh God, wherever they are in the country, wherever they're watching us from in the world, oh God. We want to pray that you may minister to them, oh God. And we come against the spirit of depression and any other form of ailment, oh God, that will lead Lead us, O oh God, into despair. And we want to thank you because you will restore us and you will rebuild our foundations with lapis lazuli, O oh God. We want to thank you because, my Father and my God, you will turn our storms into a whisper. And we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much for watching. God bless you and we will meet another time.